Hi students, so today we are myself Pratibha Ramgonda. So today we are going to discuss unit 3 that is introduction to MSP 430 architecture. In this slides we are going to discuss introduction to MSP 430 and its our features, architecture and how is the central processing unit and how memory space organization is done in your MSP 430. So coming to the introduction. Uh, this MSP 430 was introduced by Texas Instruments which is a low power microcontroller market and this was introduced in the year 1990. So this is a 16 bit RISC that is reduced instruction set computer based it is a mixed signal processor. So it has a right of mixing intelligent peripherals. So Another advantage of this is it can be easily used it is it is having low co low cost and lowest power consumptions over thousands of applications. Coming to uh, we can it is seen that this MSP 430 is designed specifically for ultra low power applications. This is because it is having flexible clocking system it has multiple low power modes it also has instant wake up and intelligent autonomous peripherals which will make your ultra low power optimization which in return extends the battery life another advantage can be they are highly integrated and they will offer wide range for high performance when the peripherals are analog or digital then these typical applications include embedded and sensor systems. So integrated timers are used for the configurations in your industrial control applications such as ripple control, meter control counters, digital motors or handheld meters etc. So here the MSP430 hardware will enhance the performance and it will offer a broad code hardware is compatible with the family solution coming to the features of MSP 430 the first feature is we are going to list out the features the first feature is it has ultra low power architecture and flexible clock system due to which it can extend the battery life that is the first point the second point is it has low power consumption low power consumption typically it is 0.1 microampere for your RAM data retention 0.8 microampere for RTC mode operation, 250 microampere for active operation. So the third feature is it offers low operation voltage that can be typically from 1.8 volt to 3.6 volt. The another important feature over here is zero power brown out reset which is also known as BOR. So this is an enhanced library which will benefit uh, several applications when you include include capacitive touch metering metrology or if you are any uh, doing low power design and debugging it also has extensive interrupt capability which will help you to need in the polling and it has flexible and powerful processing capabilities it also has seven source address modes so this all together comes under your zero power brownout reset coming to the next feature it has four destination address modes it has only 27 core instructions it has prioritized nested interrupts it has a large register file it has efficient table processing and it can also convert fast hexa to decimal conversion now let us see the architecture of your msp 430 so this is a diagram of your architecture msp 430 you can see what all it consists it has a clock system in clock system it has a clock system so it has a clock and sm clock a clock is your auxiliary clock sm clock is your sub main clock this is your flash ram then it has a risk cpu which is of 16 bit watchdog timer is there analog peripheral and digital peripheral mab stands for um, main address bus and this stands for memory data bus so we will see one by one we will discuss one by one so your MSP 430 CPU it is a 16 bit RISC architecture and this we can uh, understood from the following diagram which we had seen previously now the controller performance 
is directly related to your 16 bit data bus it has seven addressing modes it has reduced instruction set which will help you in a shorter and denser programming code in order to have a fast execution okay so now these msp control families they will share 16 bit cpu core it has risk type intelligent peripherals it also consists of flexible clock system which is interconnected by using one human common memory address bus mab and memory data bus mdb architecture that is what we discussed here next your MSP430 CPU. Your MSP430 CPU it includes 16 bit ALU and it is having a set of 16 registers. So 16 registers are from R0 to R15. Out of this we have 4 special purpose registers. The remaining 12 are your general purpose registers. That is from R0 to R3 are your special purpose registers and all the remaining are your general purpose registers now what are these special purpose registers one is pc that is your program counter one more is sp that is your stack pointer third is your sr that is your status register and fourth is cgx that is your constant generator this we will discuss in your part b now the last part over here is memory space you can see the diagram over here this is the memory space organization diagram for your MSP430. So we will discuss this. The all memory they include either RAM, flash, ROM or it also has an information memory. It has a special function registers and there are few peripheral registers. All are mapped into a single contagious address space. Now this CPU is capable of addressing data values now those values can be either bytes bytes means 8 bits or words it can be 6 bits now words are always addressed at your even address which will contain least significant byte followed by the next dot address which contains the most significant byte for 8 bit operation your data either it can be assessed to odd or even addresses but if you are doing for 16 bit operations your data values always should be assessed to your even address this is the most important thing which you have to remember so you can see this is your memory organization diagram so from this uh, memory address to this memory address it is allocated for your interrupt vector table so the access you can access either word or byte so from this uh, address to this address you have flash or rom from this address to this address you have information memory where you will include only flash devices and from this to this you have boot memory for bootstrapping where here also you include flash devices here the memory is allocated for your ram then these three these two that is from here to here we are using for peripheral modules so this particular addresses are used for 16 bit peripheral address and these particular addresses are used for 8 bit peripheral address and the last over over here is special function register make sure that your special function register will uh, support only for the byte operation okay so now let us see now the first uh, in your uh, memory organization is your interrupt vector table which is mapped uh, from the memory space that is located from 0FF0H through to 0FFEH. Now the priority of your interrupt will increase only when it is the word address is increased. Now the start address of your flash or ROM it depends upon how much amount of flash or ROM which is present on the device. So basically their address vary from 011100H to 0F800H and it also always runs at the end of the address space 0FFH. So these all addresses and the spaces are shown in your diagram. The next now this particular flash it can be used for your both code and data now word or byte tables can also be stored with the help of this flash rom so this can be used in your codes tables or hard coded constants which will reside in this memory space now the msp430 flash devices they will contain a address space for information memory so that can be uh, your onboard app rom where you have to uh, store the new uh, next 
next so that you can store the next variables before you power down so this is also you can be used for your code memory the next is your msp430 flash devices they contain address for your bootstrap now this bootstrapping uh, memory address is located between your 0h through uh, 0ffh now this bootstrap loader it is located in your memory space which is external interface which can be used to program the flash memory in addition to your jtag so this particular memory will not be accessible by other applications why it is done so that it cannot be overwritten accidentally next is your ram ram always starts from the address 0 to 00 h and end of that will be depending upon how much uh, amount of ram is present on that device so this particular ram it is used for both code and data coming to peripheral modules you can see there were two types of peripheral modules 8 bit and 16 bit so they consist all on chip peripheral registers which can be mapped up into the address space so they can these modules can be assessed either by byte or word operations depending on the peripheral module whether the peripheral module is 8 bit or 16 bit respectively now if it is a 16 bit uh, modules then they are located in the address space starting from 0100 through 01 FFH and if they are 8 bit peripheral modules are mapped into memory addresses from 0010H to 00 FFH. Then the last in your memory space organization is your SFRs that is special function registers and those are located at the memory addresses from 0002 to 000 FH. So they are used or they can assess using byte instructions only thank you